Now on to other stories. Nigeria's electricity sector is currently beset by a wide range of challenges, which the government continues to battle through the application of varying measures. But the consensus among the public is that these measures have not been far-reaching enough. Well, as sweeping as that statement may have sounded, we're now being joined by, from our Arise Abuja studios for some explanation by a former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Power, Bex Dagogo Jack. He will help us evaluate the progress made in the power sector, especially with respect to the CMN's intervention, the national metering rollout, estimated billing versus electricity theft, and the declining private sector investment inflow. So quite a lot to unpack. Uh, welcome again, Mr. Bex Dagogo Jack. Let's start from here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had a recent power blackout. Um, apparently, the grid was down yesterday. Um, but collating the figures, we've had four power blackouts already this year, and we're just over halfway through the year. And apparently, over 150 power blackouts in the last seven years. Why does this whole area of dealing with the power grid seem to be evading us? Um, on two or three levels. Um, yeah, level one has to do with technology and equipment. The other level has to do with market. How is the, how is the market structured? What kind of discipline do you have in the market? Do people pay for not delivering service? So I, I think if we look at the third leg, which is the, the regulator, uh, between these three elements, we can, we can solve, at least we can point to what, where the problem is and know what to do about it. Okay, um, so let me just uh, piggyback on that because um, we've seen a few people venture into the area of supplying power, albeit privately within estates uh, in Lagos. I know one in Maryland estates and, and it's been successful. So some would say it's a matter of demand and supply. Where is the problem in that, do you think? No, I see no problem in um, independent power uh, vendors oper operating outside the grid and, and trying to um, close, close the gap between demand and supply. But, but typically, as you know, those are willing buyer, willing seller contracts. They are, they are not they are not regulated by the, by the tariffs, tariff structure. And so it's, it's, it's almost like people are resorting to self-help, you know, drill, drill, drilling water for their homes and stuff like that. There's not a lot of difference between the two. Mm. Okay. And please, can you talk to us about some of the effects of the unbundling of the power sector? No, the unbundling of the power sector was a necessary step going towards the full privatization and handing over of the sector from government management as a vertically integrated uh, business to, to the private hands in a way that brings new capital, new management skills, and uh, if you like, introduces the proper market chain, market value chain structure. Uh, so there is, a, there is a generator, there is a distributor, there is a transmitter, and they are all having handshakes in an efficient manner. This is what happens everywhere else. So we are, we are not much different from that. Mm. Okay. Um, somehow it hasn't been successful though, because it held much promise. And uh, some might say it was successful to do with the telecommunication sector, but we're getting it wrong somewhere along the line in the power sector. But to just um, add to that, there was the promise of the Siemens uh, intervention that was touted uh, about two years ago, and people felt that this would be the, the game changer. What has happened to that? I wish I could tell you more than I, I know, but, but generally, the industry observation is that, that we can have more information than we currently have about the project. You know what? 
we're dealing with electricity. Electricity is not just light. It, it's energy. It's fuel. You can, you can ground the country completely if your electricity performance is very poor. So I don't think we can manage an electricity agenda in darkness without enough clarity in the public space. And that is some of the challenge I have with the Siemens uh, agenda or initiative. Sir, do you think you can proffer some solutions as to these challenges that we're facing? Such as? Anything. <laughs> Anything that you can proffer from your, from your stance of expertise. No, no, no. no but, but, yeah, yeah. Basically, we must accept that, that a reform is a very difficult uh, experiment to deliver. And, and, and it has many moving parts. You can't drop the ball. Everybody must do their bit. Um, the, generally, this is the generic way to say this is the problem. But in solving it, you also cannot firefight, firefight the problem with so many, so many vehicles of uh, fire trucks all over the place spraying solutions at it. You, you need to research, you need to organize. Um, and there are ways to do that. Um, and we can, we can do it by consulting, by sharing information, by collaborating, by transferring responsibilities to the right places and, and holding them accountable. It is, it's almost like a system reset that needs to happen. And, um, because of time, when we may have to move on to speak on River State. I know that that's a topic that's dear to your heart. Um, you know the recent um, ruling um, by the River State um, Federal High Court in Port Harcourt about VAT being paid to the states, and Wiki's subsequent stance last Thursday to go ahead and sign a bill that would en enable people pay their taxes to River State. What's your position on that? Do you feel he was um, wise to do that? Mm, my thinking is that um, both in theory and in practice, the federating units are the ones that give life to the federal system that we operate. If the federating units are marginalized, it means that the center is not well. So typically, I expect not just Wiki, but most of the other state governments and the assemblies to test the constitutional lim limits of the federation units in, a, in the proper way, in the judicious way. They will win some, they will lose some. I prefer that as the model for changing our constitution than what we are hearing now about secession, about uh, devolution, about all sorts of noise out there. But there is already a method to this madness but a lot of people are not committing to it. So I think he did the right thing. The governor did the right thing. Mm. Saying that this is, this is the better way to go towards uh, decentralizing power. Um, if we go through these systemic rulings of the court and enforcement of these various aspects, whether it be tax or police force and so on. Correct. Sorry, just to go back on, on the, the issue of power uh, while we still have you. A lot of people have honed in on the fact that the major problem with our power sector is the distribution. And that's where the bottleneck arises. Could you just zoom in on that and say, what is it that we need to do to unblock that bottleneck? Oh, thank you. It goes, it goes a little beyond that. It's, it's an oversimplification of the problem. But if you ask me, I would like to hold all those companies, the private sector companies that we handed over the sector to in 2013. They have an obligation to rise up to their responsibilities. They cannot 
continue to be lap dogs in the hands of the CBN, the Presidential Power Initiative, um, donor agencies, BPE. It, it, it can go on forever. They have to win themselves. They have to win themselves and walk, walk around to own this, this sector that has been handed over to them. Their inability to do that is part of why we are, we are having all this situation we are having. And, and just looking ahead, before we let you go, do you see a time when we can actually push beyond these, what some would call backward constraints? Because someone pointed out that you know, our first power station was founded in as early as 1926 or 27, and here we are, 100 years on, and we're still at very virgin territory, if not regressing. So what will it take for us? Do you have a vision of what it will take for us to push into renewable energies, maybe utilizing solar power across the nation? Oh, yeah, we, we have done the right thing by taking government out of the day-to-day -day management of the market space. That is the right thing to do. Market has a way of correcting itself, expanding its capacity, um, making, making improvements in technology, in structure. Market has a way of taking care of itself. So if government does not interfere too much with this market, it will sooner or later find its way around the problems it is facing and then overgrow it. It has happened over and over again. And when that happens, the government is the beneficiary. Employment goes up, taxes go up, service delivery goes up, electricity penetration goes up. So sometimes I wonder why government is so much in the way of, of markets. I can't understand it. All right. So that's all the time we have for now. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bex Dagogo Jack, former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Electricity. Thank you so much for speaking with us this afternoon.